What's up, guys? Thanks for watching this week's entry of my vlog. Um, before we get started with the NFL draft and the Seattle Seahawks situation with Matt Hasselbeck, just wanted to say long live the Seattle Supersonics. Um, in case you don't know, the Oklahoma City Thunder are one game away from going into the second round of the NBA playoffs. Um, I haven't been following the NBA in the longest time. Uh, I haven't followed the NBA in the longest time, excuse me. Uh, but I know a lot of people who do, and uh, I've said it once, but it was a very long time ago. Seattle's sport, uh, deadliest sports secret is we hate the NBA, but we still care. We still care about the NBA. And so I know a lot of people who are watching it, enjoying the playoffs. They just want the Oklahoma City Thunder out of it because everything they do is a slap in the face to Seattle. That's, what, uh, that's at least how Seattle fans are taking it on Sports Talk Radio, blogs, online, um, so, like I said, Oklahoma City Thunder, go down as soon as possible. So go Nuggets, go Trailblazers, Dallas, Orlando, Atlanta, Lakers, Celtics, Heat, who, who cares? Thunderbirds, uh, the Thunder, excuse me, the Thunder have to go down. Okay, so now let's talk about the uh, NFL draft and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I started this vlog around the NFL draft last year, um, and so I was, you know, brand new to this whole broadcasting and YouTube thing. And so if you would like to hear how what I think of the overall draft and why I don't do a mock draft and uh, why I don't watch it, the link's below. So uh, go ahead and check that out if you would like to. So as far as the Seattle Seahawks goes, um, I'm not going to name any names this year because uh, I, I don't follow the NFL draft as much as I had to the previous three years when I was doing Sports Talk Radio. But I will say this. Um, I am happy with the 25th pick overall. Um, I know a lot of Seattle. I mean, there's some sort of there's a little bit of controversy with the Seattle Seahawks being uh, eight and ten, finishing the year with an eight and ten record if you count the postseason. And um, uh, that being said, uh, they actually had an opportunity if they lost to the Rams in the NF in the last game of the season to get the number 14th pick overall in the NFL draft. And I am fine with the 25th pick because if you are celebrating high draft picks, nine times out of ten, it usually means your team is not doing well. I would much rather have play a playoff experience, a playoff appearance, and playoff games than high draft picks. Um, I understand the Seahawks. You know, we got in with a seven and nine record, so a lot of you know it makes it kind of interesting this year with the seven and, uh, and eight and ten overall team having the 25th pick in the draft. But, hey, we just pulled the greatest upset in NFL history. So, I'm fine with that. Now, as far as who the Seattle Seahawks should draft at number 25, I was torn uh, with this for the, lo for the longest time. I thought, if the Seahawks sign Matt Hasselbeck, re-sign Matt Hasselbeck, then I want them to go after an offensive lineman. If they don't sign Matt Hasselbeck, then you take a quarterback. But, uh, but then I thought, wait a minute. It doesn't matter who is behind the offensive line at the quarterback position for the Seattle Seahawks. Why is this? Because our offensive line is very inconsistent. There were times where we were great last year. There were times where we were terrible last year. It's a little better, but it's still got a long ways to weigh if we want to go back to the postseason and win a championship. It's a long way away. So that being said, I it doesn't matter if it's Matt Hasselbeck, Charlie Whitehurst, J.P. Lossman, Jake Locker, Andy Dalton. Uh, it doesn't matter who's behind. The players are going to struggle behind um, behind this the, uh, the offensive line, and particularly a rookie. Because not only is, is the offensive line shaky, a, a rookie coming out of the NFL draft is going to have to learn the new system, how to run, throw, and all that jazz. So I think it just would be better to take an offensive lineman. As far as the Matt Hasselbeck situation goes, uh, because there are some fans that think that we're going to take a, a quarterback and that is pretty much gone. Um, as far as that whole situation goes, I'm fine with whatever Matt Hasselbeck wants to do. If Matt Hasselbeck wants to stay in Seattle and play a couple, one, maybe two or three more years, I'm fine with that. If he decides to leave, take the money, and go to another team, hopefully not a division rival, hopefully, 
Um, but if he decides to do that, I am okay with it. Why is this? Well, if you've been watching my vlog on a consistent base, basis, you will notice that I have a tendency to bash quarterbacks. Um, and so that being said, when Hasselbeck was first traded to Seattle, yeah, I wasn't impressed with him. Here we are trading for a, a draft pick. I believe he was a six-round quarterback. <laughs> um, but at the same time, he made me eat my words. And regardless if he signs and he stays with the team or leaves, he will go down as the greatest quarterback in Seahawks history. There is no other quarterback who has more passing yards, started more games, more playoff uh, games, who has led the Seahawks to more playoff appearances than Matt Hasselbeck. Um, I'm not so sure about touchdowns, but I'm pretty sure that Matt Hasselbeck leads the team in team history in uh, touchdown passes, and uh, he definitely has raised the bar. He has raised the bar. Not only that, he's the only quarterback to help lead this team to a Super Bowl appearance. This guy has done everything he has been asked to do except win a championship. But most importantly, he has raised the level of expectations. Because there are three big quarterbacks in Seattle Seahawks history. Jim Zorn, who started out right here. Dave Craig, raised the bar a little bit more with the, you know, the 1983 uh, playoff run. And then there's Matt Hasselbeck, um, you know, with all the records and with all the wins that come from behind for, uh, victories in the fourth quarter. So because of that, I hope Matt Hasselbeck doesn't go to a division rival or let's say the Steelers. But if he does leave, I won't be angry at him I, I, at all. Um, he's, got the, he, he's earned the right to do what he wants. He's done everything that's asked for and, uh, you know, ultimately has been – a great role model on the team and you know I just can't stop saying enough good things about him there are some people that think well he's he's not a particularly good guy you know look at the players who were around him but at the same time he's the one that has the stats again most passing yards in team history he's led the team to the most division championships in team history he's was on the team against the New Orleans Saints who in my opinion uh, the, the Seattle Seahawks uh, pulled the greatest upset in the NFL in NFL history um, because of how bad they were in the regular season to be division champs. And most importantly, he led us to a Super Bowl appearance. So um, until those records and until those numbers uh, are, are broken, he's going to go down as the greatest Seattle Seahawks quarterback in the history of the franchise. So as far as I'm concerned, he can do what he wants. Um, again, Feel free to watch my video that I posted last year. The link is below about me talking about why I don't like the NFL draft. And uh, we'll see you next time, uh, sometime next week. We'll talk to you all later. And thanks for watching another installment of my vlog.